Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is our final word show. I am your host, Ryan Curley, joined today, as always, by Paul Nealon. Paul, we might just get cracking straight away. It's been a fantastic weekend once again. Yeah, lots football. of football. Yeah, lots definitely. and lots of football. I think two games were just back from the, the UCD game uh, versus the Dock, which was, was actually quite good because it was the, you know neutral people that just went to the game. Yeah. As there was a lot of people there with the Chamber Rovers sub to, uh, top some of them as well. Obviously, keen interest with the with the league and that, and obviously the fact that um, you know they're playing balls tomorrow, but they're also playing Dundalk on Friday, so they're obviously uh, keen to have a look and see how how Dundalk are faring. You know, UCD proved uh, a a good opponent against, but we'll come to that probably last. I mean, yeah, they might uh, do. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, we were at um, Pat's and uh, Sligo on. On Friday night as well, we'll get to that as well. But, uh, yeah, I thought we might get cracking with Bowes and UCD. Obviously, yeah. a game that Kieran and Connor were at. So, a good game and a good result for Bowes with a 3 0 victory there. And um, it's probably what they want at this stage of the season. It's a, it's a nice game for them to uh, have a chance to get some goals. On yeah, the well, the thing about like a lot of people were criticizing Bowes and saying, you know, that they were this and they were that and they're going to get relegated and stuff like that. And it just kind of shows the, the character of the players and, you know, the fact that they're, they're getting so many full houses as well is brilliant for, for not only the club, but it's brilliant for the league. You know, they, 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 they do really, you know, get behind their team and it's brilliant to see. But, um, you know, they're really def- defying the odds there. You know, I mean, the, the only team to, to take points off uh, Shamrock Rovers yeah. or like the, well, the win yeah. not to take points off the yeah. win uh, against Shamrock Rovers albeit the you know the red card where Aaron Green was a bit um, we ruined the game that day yeah. but anyway the uh, point that I'm making is the fact that you know we've just watched Dundalk play UCD and you know they looked like a really really strong opponent um, and you know always beat them comfortably but apparently James Talbot made an absolutely worldly of a save yeah. that, that yeah, kept them in so, yeah. and uh, you know the lads were, were harping on about that just saying how brilliant that was uh, I haven't seen the save myself but uh, Connor was saying that it's actually one of the best live saves he's ever seen so um, I suppose that speaks well but he again you, you look at you know he came in when uh, Supple you know Supple was, got, was re- retiring and you know Arguably the best keeper in the league. Uh, I mean, you do well to find a better keeper than James Supple, mm-hmm. but he's came in and he's just been phenomenal. Another clean sheet, you know, and and, and fair use to the defense as well because you know, um, they took a, a, an awful lot of stick at the start of the season, yeah. so they're going to be. But they, you know, they're very resolute, and you know, Finney Corcoran's banging them in at the other end, which I'm delighted for because he's an absolute top lad, and um, you know, he's doing his job at the at the other end of the pitch. And, Absolutely, and, uh, yeah. Our mate Conor Levinson getting on the score sheet as well, which doesn't happen too often. Um, the Wexford man, but uh, yeah, brilliant. And like the, and the lad said, like and and um, there is an interview with James Talbot, which we will get to in a minute with Kieran and Jim. But you know, they, they did speak about how open you know UCD were and they had their chances, but the only thing is they weren't clinical enough, and that mm-hmm. was the problem. And then the balls were, and once balls got that goal, then they were they were in control of the game. Yeah, absolutely. I think it was UCD who was supposed to have started better. In fact, um, seemed to be causing problems at the back for Bowes. But they they rode the wave. They rode the wave. Um, they dealt with the pressure, and then they they found themselves a goal. Uh, the floodgates opened after uh, Denny's goal, Denny's penalty, in fact, uh, and then um, yeah, Bowes were in control from there. And, he has and yeah. Rovers as well yeah. when, it, when it matters, you know. Absolutely, yeah. But again, it's um, I think when you look at Bowes, they're a valued side in the league. You know, the fans, as you've mentioned. They bring in numbers every single game. They're always in voice as well. It's always great atmosphere. I can't wait to go back to Daily Mount this Friday, in fact, because I think it will be a cracking game as well. So, yeah, I, I've been happy um, to see Bowes do so well. I was one of the one of the people that, that did underestimate them uh, ahead of the start of the season. So I'll hold my hands up and say, you know, I was wrong because I thought they'd do a lot worse than where they are now. Yeah. Um, I think they probably surprised a few, to be fair, but they've done really well. And as you've mentioned, Talbot as well. I think he's got most clean sheets. In the league now, Probably, if I'm not yeah, wrong, so he'd be up there with Brendan anyway. But uh, it's been fantastic this season. They they really have been strong at the back as well. They seem to have sorted out their defensive issues, and also obviously Dinny's been scoring as well. So it's not just them scoring goals; it's that they're not actually conceding as much goals as they would have done last yeah. season as well. Well, so, the midfielders are adding, adding and that's it, yeah, of course, yeah. goals as well, which always helps. So I mean, there, there is that to it as well. But I mean. 
I kind of feel bad for UCD. You know, I haven't watched them today. Like I think it's the first time I've seen them all season, and they do play lovely football. And I think they're almost a victim of their, you know, their football at times. That it's because they're not killing off teams or whatever. They play such a wide expanse of uh, game. You know, they keep the game. They keep the ball for long periods of yeah. the game, like minutes at a time. They kind of, you know, expressed how how much like they would keep the ball. And he actually showed me he was like watching them today. And he was right, he'd keep the ball for long spells and frustrate the opposition. But um, I suppose we might as well jump straight to the uh, James Kieran's interview with James Talbot. So you can check that out here. Uh, Kieran McGoy was speaking with the goalkeeper of Bohemians, James Talbot. So check it out. Kieran here, Irish Football Fan TV. I'm with goalkeeper James Talbot after their 3 0 win against UCD. James, uh, do you think 3 0 fair, fair result? Overall, yeah. We didn't start. We didn't start well. Yeah, second half. Uh, I think it, it was deserved. Uh, they probably gone away thinking how do we get beat 3-0. But again, they play nice football. But when you put it up to them, they uh, they seem to to go into a shell. So no, I think it was deserved overall. First half we were slow. The lads and all that. The, the lads are better than that. So uh, no, it was overall I, I think it was it was quite comfortable second half. So the first half was obviously quite tight, and uh, you can see why they they're in games that where there's a lot of goals conceded and scored because the way they play they're quite open. Yeah, again, the lads know that uh, they like to play ball. To be fair to them, and they, and they did, they, they did pop it around a bit uh, first half. But again, when they lose the ball in, in uh, certain areas, that that, that, that wide open. So mm-hmm. and they're, uh, I don't want to say spoilless, but they haven't got the, the, the bottle that some of the yeah. lads do, and uh, especially at us because uh, we have lads who yeah. they want to win games, they want to fight, uh, and they, they see the second half we're, we're tuning it up and they, they're just passing the ball around. They didn't really yeah. care about winning, so I know it's their philosophy and all that, but. It's questionable, but mm-hmm. we're we're happy. So. Yeah. So you uh, even in the first half you weren't at all worried. Like w- when it was a little bit tight, they were getting a few chances, and obviously they had their very good chance that you saved and touched onto the crossbar. Yeah. No. It's just if they get ahead, it's tough then to uh, they'll play with more confidence and uh, we won't start to panic. But it's whoever gets ahead, it's 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 a big boost. So uh, yeah. I'm, I'm glad I'm glad we got that penalty in the end. So <laughs> it gave us massive confidence. Yeah. And just last thing I say to you there is a uh, game big game there during the week now. Um, What's your thoughts ahead of the game against Rovers? Yeah, I'm no, looking forward to it. It's, it's another game for us. I know obviously the fans and stuff, the build up and stuff, but it's another game for us. We'll roll on. Uh, we're lucky the other night uh, against the dark, and to be able to back there tonight was massive. So the lads weren't even thinking about Rovers. It was thinking about us tonight, and we got the results. We, got, we, we played better second half, so we're, we're happy enough, and we'll go down to the Rovers and see what see how it goes. All right, brilliant. Well, thanks very much, James. All right, thanks. What did, you, what did you think of what Talbot said about UCG um, being spineless? Yeah, it was a bit weird, wasn't it? I thought it was a bit strange that one. Like, it was, I think it was a bit mad. Anyway, well, well, I just wasn't expecting him to kind of just come out. Yeah, it's like it's almost like a FU comment. Like, slow down. Yeah, I don't think he meant it in that way. But yeah, kind of came no, I don't think it. so. Yeah. Um, yeah, but he was in a rush apparently, so that's why he kind of ran off real quick at the end there. So, uh, a huge thanks to James anyway for for doing that interview. Appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, but like, obviously, Ball's next game now is is a. Uh, Going to be Rovers tomorrow night. We're going to, we're moving on to Rovers now. But yeah. do you how do you see do you think that would be a close one? I really really enjoyed the Dublin derby when we went to uh, Daly North. It was such a good game. Probably the best game I've been at Atmosphere in the League of Ireland. Ireland. Just in general, that's probably the best League of Ireland game I've been to. Atmosphere, yeah. Um, just everything. Like the players are so riled up. You could see they knew how important a game it was. Um, and I remember as well. Yeah. yeah, I remember when Green was sent off. The amount of abuse he got from the Bose fans, understandably. Um, to say the least, you know there is a rivalry there, and that was evident on the night. And I cannot wait to see how it gets on on uh, on Tuesday. I think it'd be a very good game. And as you mentioned, it could be a close game. You know, I think both sides are very very well matched. I think Rovers probably edge Bose at the midfield, but at the back maybe Bose are a bit stronger. Um. And possibly even scoring goals, you know, both had that out and out striker and Dinny. Uh, good to see Aaron getting on the score sheet recently now. He seems to be banging in the goals in recent weeks. Maybe now he's found himself a bit of rhythm. And I think that was the one thing that Rovers were lacking was goals up front. Obviously Aaron has provided a lot. And Jack as well. And it's done more than just well, scores created. I mean, he created the goal with the next yeah, game. Yeah, exactly, yeah. The, the, uh, Derry. It was all about that pass from from Seth Byrne. Yeah, super pass again. He's been doing these passes to kind of go under the radar too. I mean, I I spoke at length about that pass, the reverse pass for Armagh, and it was the second goal against Cork. 
Yeah, um, yeah. Two, uh, three and even again, do you remember against Pats as well when the ball went through? I think it was, yeah, was Webster. Was Webster got in the way, and then Green, yeah, took down Green. Yeah, the box, yeah. But I mean, like, I'm surprised it's not a highlight reel of just Jack Byrne's pass. It should be about ten minutes long because yeah. his pass. I wouldn't be surprised to keep it on the deck or something. Come out with it now and said, yeah, you know. they probably will. But um, like, Derek, unbelievable, get on it. unbelievable passer of the ball. He really is. Mm. He's the he's the League of Ireland's Luka Modric. You know, he can just he can just or De Bruyne even because he can just pick a pass from anywhere. You know, it's it's yeah. unbelievable what he does. And again, sets up Aaron Green with the goal against Derry. It's I mean, good, that's a tough place to go. I mean, people forget. Yeah, that I was going to say it's a good win away. In but the, it was also you know. know it was obviously the shoe you know, and stuff like that. So there was, yeah. it was a bit of a, you know, there was a sporters bus wasn't able to go up and stuff like yeah. that as well. So there was a lot of stuff kind of surrounding that game. So I think it was a massive statement where Robbers to go up there and actually get the win. Yeah. I think that was a, a big, big deal for them to get that win. So, I mean... I think a lot of people as well will be looking at Rovers games now. They've got Derry. They've just played Derry. They've got Bowes on Tuesday. Dundalk then away on the Friday. And if they get nine from nine, I mean, who's going to stop them? They get nine from nine. That's it. I think that's that's yeah. that's the league more or less decided because it's just downhill from there really for them. So well, I don't, I don't mean downhill as such, but I mean the Rovers. As, as I've said, if they get nine from nine, they have to. I don't see. I don't. I, I think they'll draw one of the games. Probably. Um, Probably. Whether it's Bowes or or Dundalk or um, I can't see them winning. I just can't see them getting uh, yeah. the nine points. But if they do, I mean. Yeah, it's if they That's do, then you'd probably start thinking that the the, the league is over. Yeah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have thought that. Yeah, well, you know, no, the start no. of the season, but that's football for you, really, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, you know, as I said, they, they were down watching, uh, the doc, uh, Stephen Bradley and some of them were at the game today, like that. So, um, as I say, it'll, be, it'll just be an interesting, um. It's just an interesting week in general for the league. Yeah. I think this yeah. this will be the big one now before there's obviously the break. So, this will be if Rovers really want to make their impact or whatever, because there's a likelihood of someone like Jack Byrne might get sold. You know, if he keeps the form that he's at, he's playing at a really high level. Absolutely, yeah. And training with Ireland, so he did play, he would have carried that intensity further on playing with uh, playing with his team now. So and adding that intensity to other players in training, so it's only bringing them up a level. But I mean, if he goes, he's probably been a difference maker, a bit like Sean McGuire was for. Yeah. Uh, Cork a few yeah. seasons ago, so I think he, is, he's that important to Shamrock Rovers, and they can't afford him and McInnes. Although, you know, I think Lauren Finn goes a bit under the radar too. The work he does because yeah. ever since he's gone out wide, Bird's been able to go in the hall, and do what he does best in there. Where I think, Finn, well, Finn's been getting goals too, though. Let's not forget so. and creating goals yeah. as well. I think even Bolger when he plays, I mean, their midfield is just brilliant. And Rose. Trevor Clark's been a good Trevor Clark, yeah. as well. So getting him back was 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 really big. But uh, just a quick preview on the on the game. What would be your score prediction for tomorrow night's game? Oh, it's Lover, very suppose. hard to call. I think it'll. There won't be much goals. It's, I'm. I'm tempted to say Rovers win. I think we're going to go two one. Rovers. Yeah. I was going to go two one Rovers myself. Sorry, Bowes fans. Yeah. Uh, well, I just think if it's eleven v eleven and there's no red cards, uh, and it's in Rovers ground as well. And they're supposed Rovers, to be... Rovers have lost so many of the derbies now that they just they need to get exactly to get yeah. Back. And, and look, if they if they want to be champions, this these are the games that you have to win. Considering the form they're in as well, and also the fact that I think well, there's I think seven thousand in there for for tomorrow night's game, so a massive attendance as well. Mm. It's supposed to be about thousand one hundred or so uh, Bose fans as well traveling yeah. for it, so it should be a cracking game and. Um, yeah, I can't wait to see um how it goes really, yeah. Yeah, I think Terry will be dis- he'll be disappointed as well, not getting any points. So, um yeah. he's just always say seems to say the same thing about Terry, it's just that they're up and they're down. You just never get to see them enough, you know, and that's, that's it is the, it's quite a narrow defeat as well, isn't it? It's only the one goal in it, you know. Yeah. Um I don't I, again I don't really know how the game went because I haven't really seen much highlights. Um I've only seen Green's goal, but um you know I don't know about Derry. They're just such an up and down side. They're, having the, you know? they're not having the worst season. Though, no, you know they're I mean? not. They're not. They've they've done okay. But they've been um, they've been I suppose the word they've been average. Yeah, you know, so it's uh, probably fair to say. Yeah, what I I mean, we've gone a bit kind of overboard speaking about just you know Rovers. You do kind of need to give a little bit of credit towards you know Derry. Yeah, and uh, you know they they have been average, but I mean, if they can recruit again at the break. You never know how their season could go. A lot of teams seem to do that. They, they do well to a certain point, bring in some more players, and then 
really want a bit of a, a, a run at the moment. It's a bit of a remember, rejuvenation. You remember, yeah. like, uh, always at the end of the last season, yeah. when it was mad yeah. run, yeah. beating everybody. Um, that's what they really need is something like that. And that will, you know, push them towards um, Europe then, you know. Yeah, yeah. We'll see what they can do. But we will We'll move on to Dundalk and Finn Harps. And what a game it was for Daniel Kelly, who obviously got himself a hat-trick and uh, a very good hat-trick as well at that. And um, I think that puts him right up there with the league leaders in terms of goal scoring as well. Not sure how many he's on in terms of total, but he's, he's definitely up there. He definitely um, has a few. Um, picked up from where he was last season. Yeah, no absolutely. Bohemians and I still, you know, he seems like a very honest, hard, work, hard worker fella. And knows where the goal is. Right place, right time, I will say about his goal stuff. Um, he seems to cut in from the right yeah. when he kind of cuts into the edge of the box, where a striker would normally be. And he just picks up all the scraps. And, you know, he got you know rewarded with two of the... I think two of the three of the goals were, were very similar. Mm. Um, but again, it's it, it's 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 the not grinding that results again and keeping the pressure upon those, which they really need to do. Um, three against Finn Harps, and then today, you know, three one against UCD. They made hard work of it at the start. Yeah, they did. Uh, going one down, but you know they they showed why they were champions last year. Absolutely. You know Patrick McIlhenny on that back now. Um, Chris Shields as well Chris back Shields, in the middle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. so I mean, they they're starting to get their their players back. Mm-hmm. Um, Pat Hoover, I don't know whether he'd be worried that he had to score from out and he's got one goal from open play. If he's still drawing penalties, I don't think he'll care that much. But um, he nearly had a penalty today as well. He did score a penalty. Yeah. yeah, but the other the other incidents where he was booked for uh, for a dive. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's kind of hard to see where that was. The real player blocking off. Our, really yeah, my our, our angle wasn't great. It looked a penalty to me, but that's only because of the way he went down. But then afterwards, uh, it was usually a goalkeeper who was just screaming at the referee. So it made me think, oh, was it a penalty? You know, yeah. he seems very agitated about Soft, that. Probably. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. again, I didn't really um, see it so much. So I'd like to see it back. Um, but yeah, I don't think Huber needs to worry so much because he has been fantastic. And when he's not scoring, Daniel Kelly is. So there you go. Um yeah, or Georgie yeah. Kelly. Or Georgie Kelly, for that matter, yeah. We'll get on to the, the result against UCD today. But again, Finn Harps, they'll probably feel hard done by because um, they obviously wouldn't have had a too long a distance to travel to Dundalk compared to if they went to Cork or Waterford or whatever. So the fans were hopefully there in numbers. I just, you know, you feel sorry for Finn Harps, you know, because yeah. um, anytime I've seen them, they've just been quite flat. Their performance has been quite flat. But... When they seem to play at home, they're, they're really good and, you know, score a lot of goals against big teams. Yeah. So, and they, they can score goals or whatever, but for, for whatever reason, they just haven't been uh, getting the results that probably they want. And I think they'll struggle to stay up, they really do. Um, that's not me being bad, it's just me being honest. So, sorry if you can ask fans if you're watching, but, you know, they just need to start, like UCD have, to start picking up wins uh, here and there. And, you know, especially beating the teams that are around them. That's what they need to do because they do well to to to, to beat the likes of Rovers, the Nock, you know, even Bowes. Yeah. They do, they do yeah. struggle to to play them. You know what I mean? Speaking of teams that are struggling at the minute, we went to see Sligo for the first time this season as they took on St Patrick's Athletic in Richmond Park. It was a two-one result for St Pat's Forrester and Drennan with the goals, but it was not really. A game that we will be talking about for the rest of the season. Sligo were very, um, just very pragmatic or something. They weren't. Their performance wasn't in any way exciting or whatever. The the, the manner in which they play football, how fast they move the ball, everything about them was just, you know. And apologies, Sligo fans, but and we talked to a really nice one there as well at the game. But they just seem to be very very off or something this season. I don't know what it is. They're so low down the table. Um, I don't know. I don't know what's going wrong for them this season. They just seem to get everything wrong. Well, I thought they started off quite well. They were pressing Pats early on, like first five ten minutes. They yeah. were really pressing them and pushing them back, and they were getting good joy out because the uh, Pats were making mistakes, and because they were getting closed down so yeah. quick at the start, the very very start. But then that just all kind of went out the window, and then obviously Chris Forrester scores that absolute peach of a goal. Brilliant goal. Um, Brilliant goal. We'll actually have the highlights yeah. here. So Chris picks the ball up and he seems to spot the goalkeeper off his line and he just that was, lifts that was a poor defensive header. Absolutely, that. yeah. Um it cleared right into his path to be honest. Yeah. And it seemed quite naive in fact, but just the way he chips the ball 
and he spots the keeper off his line. He hasn't got a chance, uh, Beanie, to be honest. And it's just a really, really good goal again from Chris Forrest. And he's done, he's done so many uh, unique things this season in terms of what he can do with the ball. He's just very, very good on the ball. He's been one of the past player of the season, in my opinion. Um, we've seen Pats a good bit this season. And Chris Forrest, there, I think he's a very, very important part to that team. And, and I think that goal proves it, to be honest. It's a well, I think, goal. I think, I think people want him to be a huge part of the team early on. He's only really starting to kind of get back into form now. Yeah. Um, I think it was that game against Dundalk when he came on, the game we were at, when he came on and he, he, he looked like he injured himself and he went in for a challenge. But he's played on for the rest of the game and he's just he's constantly creating threat chances and trying to become a threat. And then after that, he just started to get a bit of momentum and start playing well. But I didn't think before that he was playing too well. And a lot of Pats fans would have said that too. But, like, you're looking... A day, you know, it's a fabulous goal, but you know, as a goalkeeping phenomenon, uh, would you what would you is the keeper at fault? Yes, yeah, too far off his line, you reckon? Probably, yeah. I just uh, for me, it's a good no, it's a good goal like, for me. Let, for me, it's, it's 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 a it's a class goal, yeah, and it's all about the technique. I, I think it's a lovely goal. It shouldn't have happened because defensively, it's just so poor to head it right into his path. But I suppose, what other option did he have, yeah. And he hit it out, I suppose. But anyways, um, St. Pat's obviously get a goal with Mikey Drennan scoring a penalty as well. It was a penalty. Um, it was pretty poor defending once again from Sligo. Again, they just look so unconfident or something at the back when yeah. when when they're when they're defending uh, set pieces or whatever. It just looks Nerd. to be a bit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's the word I was gonna say. So uh, Mikey Drennan steps up. He's he's gonna score a penalty, isn't he? So it's another. I think he enjoyed that one against his former club. Sure, he seems yeah, to have gotten yeah. a lot of abuse off him earlier on in the season. I was surprised he celebrated, but like no, he was getting he was getting abuse off the Sligo fans. Yeah, yeah there was a big thing about the way he left, or whatever the manner happy. in which he left. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they, they I, were I don't think he cares to be honest. Uh, yeah, well, look, he's enjoying his football. Exactly. He got his goal, and ultimately turned out to be the winning goal. You know, and again, it was I was impressed by Pats. Mm-hmm. You know, but I was not impressed by Sligo in the slightest no. after the first ten minutes. They were just that's that's the first game we've seen of Sligo as well, and I was hoping that maybe they'd show that they had desire or passion to you know try and turn these poor results around but i didn't really see anything mm. and maybe i'm being harsh but from what i have seen they just don't really look good enough for this league and to be honest it wouldn't exactly surprise me if ucd take their place and sligo end up in that yeah, in that relegation the spot, yeah. To, yeah. As i think it's i think it, i think finn harps would finish bottom and i think it's probably it's yeah. starting to look like finn harps might finish bottom and if sligo continue that form I mean, they've between the slides probably in UCD maybe probably yeah so it's really and apologies good. again to Sligo fans it's just it doesn't look too good the outlook is a bit bleak at the minute for Sligo but maybe maybe they'll turn it around we'll have to wait and see well obviously Dave Cawley gets a late consolation Cawley goal. scores yeah um, and yeah. Brendan looked absolutely furious as well about conceding the goal you know, slammed his fist on the ground like you know but um, look again it's not enough to, to turn it around for Sligo and um so just have to keep marching on into the next game, really, because uh, that, they, they, did, they didn't give them much hope against Pats anyway. I presume Pats would win, uh, and they, they did in, in some style as well. A great goal from Forrest, I want to go. Yeah, my goal in general as well. And I obviously called for Mike Dren after the game, and here's what he had to say. Uh, Pats are after beating Sligo Rovers 2-1. Mikey Drennan with the second goal penalty. Uh, how did you thought the game went against your former club? Um, yeah, tough first half. We we're much the better side. We deserved it too. And it probably could have been more. I probably should have scored and um, create a bit more chances. Just probably the the cross is the end product. Probably isn't where we want it to be. But look, it went in two 0 and then second half we tried to kind of push on. But I think it was just natural that we kind of dropped back a bit and that. But look, it was the most important thing was three points and delighted to get. Yeah, um, as well as that, it was never going to be a case where you weren't going to celebrate against your former club, was it? But uh, I mean, I don't know. It was, a great, it was a great result. Chris Forrester got a lovely goal just before yourself as well. Was there ever a point in the game where you're kind of thinking, oh, they're on the front foot here? They might get. Uh, I know they got a late goal, but did you ever think they were going to really get back into it? Not really. No, I don't think they troubled us too much. Like I think our our back three were were fantastic, and Reece really sitting there as well, and it was it was good. Like. I, I, the goal at the end, we probably could have stopped that as well, which which we probably should have, but if it didn't happen, it was 2-1. A bit nervy at the end, but three points and uh, Scott scored more than one goal as well in the game. Yeah, absolutely. And just 
You just touched on the back three there. Is that something that you've been working on? I know you're uh, trying to get Burmo and, and Simon Madden all the time involved in the game. Is that something you've been working on consistently in training and, and, and kind of getting yourselves so it's kind of creating a bit more in the midfield for, for the likes of you know, Chris Forrest to kind of get up and attack with yourself? Yeah, that's what look, we've been working on. We can do 4 3 3 or we can do 3 5 2, um, whatever you want to. Whatever we want to, but we have worked hard in in, in training, and we want to. I think I think H wants us to have me and Charles up front, and we um, cause we know each other's game, and I think we work work well off each other. And um, but look, it's everything is just down to kind of keep working hard, and look, it's been a frustrating start, very frustrating. We kind of probably didn't expect probably to be where we are now at the minute, but look, it's, it's still early days, but we can't leave too much of a gap there, and hopefully then we'll just keep um, keep winning and keep looking up the table. Absolutely, and there was a lot of times in that game, in the half there where you were actually every single one of your players were actually in the Sligo half, which was, it was great to see. Just so much bodies getting up in support, um, which you wouldn't really have associated as was last season with watching Pats. So, um, but just for myself, uh, lastly, um, have you got your passport sorted out for a uh, European adventure? Um, well, I do. Um, look, it's if needs be. If needs be, yeah. Um, look, it's not. It's not final yet, and we yeah. don't know what's going to happen. Look, it's. That's only be me being lighthearted, anyway. It's probably a bit unfortunate on Waterford, but I think rules are rules, like, and that's the unfortunate bit. But look, it's as I say, it's it's our gain, like, and someone else's loss. So um, look, it'd be nice to get into Europe, and especially if we keep kind of that first half performance, we need to keep building on that, and it can't be just one one half. It needs to be. To have look, they're going half spells and it needs to be 60 70 minutes of us dominating the game. And look, we have the players to do that, and I just think we need to keep working hard. H, um, Sean, and Jared are all working hard, PJ, they're all working hard behind the scenes uh, with us. Like, and look, I, I think they showed in the first half, but I think it's just that second half, it's natural to drop. But look, it's it is what it is, and three points is all that matters, absolutely. And uh, just lastly, you were very unlucky not to actually win man of the match yourself. I think you were outvoted by maybe one. Chris Forrester so but uh, just in terms of myself thank you very much for your time and uh, best thank of luck you. for the season Ari well Thanks. done good interview there with Mikey we'll get on to our final game then Paul Waterford against Cork City another interesting clash and Cork will not be too pleased because it's the third game on the bounce that they've lost it's just not good enough at the minute under John Caulfield who I, I must admit I'm surprised he's still there um, it's just been abysmal from Cork this season, but um, what, what were your thoughts when, when you saw the result? First of all, um, I suppose I was shocked, but Waterford and, and Cork it seems to be a you know, monster derby and all that. Uh, it's <sighs> well, like obviously, we're, we're, we're tight connections in, in Cork with Aaron and, and Alex um, down there, but I don't know, like they've been called for Caulfield out for a long, long long time now and then since they realized the scope, wasn't it there yeah. was a few so but then they realized that you know you know who it's he who provided all the good time to stick with him type thing mm. but i mean if what the cork fans want they know they had cutbacks they lost a lot of their good players you know kieran salliers was probably top three best players in the league last oh yeah oh yeah that, yeah you definitely know? yeah and, and he, he for some reason for some reason you know, Caulfield wasn't playing it. He would be dropping him here and there. But I mean, his goal tally alone, he finished, you know, I think third or second in the in the goal scoring list. Yeah, I think with so. Like 15, 16 goals or more. Uh, so like, this is what I mean. It's, it's just like, <laughs> from a Cork point of view, if they do let Caulfield go, like, well, why? What, what are they looking for? Obviously, they want the team to win. They're not, they're not stupid. Like, but. You know what do you want them fighting for? Do you want them fighting for Europe? Do you want them just remain on the table? Do you want them fighting for the league? What, what I'd be interested to kind of hear what core fans want to get. Say if they get a new manager or whatever, what the aspirations for that manager would be, or if a new manager came in, what his task would be. I'd be interested to see what his objective for the season was. You know, stay up, fight for the league, fight for Europe. What his actual thing is, because if he's not delivering, surely he has to go. I mean. The weird thing is they won the league two years ago, you know, and and now they're they're down where they are in, in practically mid table. It just it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. I know a lot of players went in the summer there, but have the players lost their head? Is the dressing room gone? Is he lost the dressing room? Caulfield? I don't know. It just they well, just there's a, lot of, there's a lot of stuff about that push on Buckley there last week or whatever. And yeah. that was a bit over exaggerated as usual by the media. Um, 
Oh, look, most majority of Cork fans I know want them out. Um, but as I say, it, it's just kind of interesting. But credit to Waterford because they got the, the win and they've been having a really weird up and down season. Yeah. I mean, they got beat 4 1 by UCD two weeks ago, wasn't it? Uh, Crazy result that as well. Yeah, yeah. that's the game. I didn't expect that at all. Yeah, um, but, but Duggan and Elbazetti with the goals and you know, Elbazetti's got just showed absolute frightening pace. Um to get in and score his goal. And you know, I'd say core fans were just were just really, really going mad. Probably, yeah. Just yeah. RC is, is a tough place to go for and will be for most they do they do get good crowds and they get behind the team and they've seen to play well there. And that, you know, teams are gonna are gonna struggle going down there. Yeah. And ultimately Cork did, but th- that's what they need to do. They, they'll need to be relying on their home record. And I have to say, I do kind of feel sorry for the fact that, you know, Waterford uh, were misled with the FAI. Oh, yeah. And, you know, now it looks like they won't get a chance to play in Europe. And, you know, it's a, it's a, it's sad because, you know, all those fans that, you know, have been coming back up from Division 1 and, you know, a friend of mine, um, Peter Clancy, who gave us the highlights for for the Waterford, um, the Waterford goals and highlights. He tells me all the time about you know the grim days where we could barely get a couple of fans to the ground or whatever. And now they're getting huge crowds again. Exactly. Yeah. I'm I'm just you know for the sake of the club or whatever, it would have been nice for him to try and get into Europe. But probably going to be a packed game. Nothing's confirmed, but you know I would do feel sorry for as I say they're they're good people, good fans and. There's, there's nothing but good things to say about us in the show, so uh, I just wanted to kind of put that out there. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I mean, from my comment myself on it, because I was very sad to hear the news. Um, you know, it was a fairy tale story nearly for Waterford last season, how well they'd done to get fourth place. And well, they were fighting for third for a long time. Exactly, it's yeah. Rovers, like, that, the, 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 yeah, the, themselves in Rovers, yeah. but, um, you know, to see them even trying to qualify for Europe would have been just brilliant. To head down to the RSC or whatever, and, um, Unfortunately, that won't happen, uh, which is a shame, really. It is. It's a massive shame. But, um, look, there's words to be said about the FAI, but we won't say them on this show for now, at least. Mm. Yeah, to just finish up, then last year with the, with the game we got today, then yeah. uh, obviously come back three, uh, used to do one in the UCB ball. Great day. Uh, big Lots crowd. of fans as well, yeah. yeah. Great crowd. Uh, really, really nice day for it. And UCD got the ball rolling with a goal. Yo, yo, Manny. Another great finish by him. He's been really impressive with the under twenty ones. I saw Stephen Kenny there today actually, so um he's obviously looking out for um any talents that were on show and there were a few to be fair. Yeah, uh Yo Yo being yeah. yeah, absolutely. Uh and U C D started the better side but then Dundalk started to get into it and then obviously got themselves goals towards the end. Cuban obviously scoring first with the penalty. And as you said, probably could have had himself another one. We'll have to wait and see as to whether or not that was um, a legitimate claim or not. Uh, obviously, there's reaction to it from the UCD goalkeeper. wasn't too, wasn't too yeah. pleased with the idea. But Farouz actually had a chance as well um, to probably put UCD to one up before half time. And Gary, Gary Rogers made a good save. He seemed to injure himself in the process. But yeah, he, he was down for a while. Though. But uh, that was a great save. And, you know, had that kind of injuries, it would have been a. A whole different oh, absolutely! Game, you know? Yeah, it really would have opened it up. Yeah, I think I think the Rovers fans and we were obviously sitting beside a couple of them. They took a lot of positives in there uh, from today uh, in regards to the dog. Is well, so they said. Yeah. Uh, they they they're not basically from the performance they seen today. They they were saying that they weren't they weren't that uh, worried or frightened by the dog. So it's it can be interesting though because the dog can turn 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 up and. You know, really put it on sometimes. So. Absolutely, yeah. I think sometimes it depends on what Dundalk sides um, show up. Obviously, they've got great results there against Finn Harps and UCD. But yeah, well, it's got Rovers now on, on, on Friday. Let's see what they do. Well, they've got do. players back now. They've got yeah, Michelini, yeah. they've got Shields and stuff like that. And people thought they were going to rest some players or whatever. Yeah. They didn't. But uh, Michael Duffy gets a fantastic goal, rounds the keeper. Thought it looked like he took it too wide almost. Yeah. But buries it. Um, yep. And that's more of the Michael Duffy from last season. He hasn't really hit the heights that he was at last season. He yeah. hasn't been poor. He just hasn't. He just hasn't been probably the standard that he would uh, want of want of himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're probably right to be fair. And then George Kelly as well, I guess, is her. Yeah, um, I thought that goal was just pure composure. Very, very good. Um, very good finish. He lets the ball round him. He makes an idiot of a defender, yeah. and then just you know gets the goal against his former uh, club and. 
Wenn man eins in die Perz, das ist äh, ganz gut aus, das ist nicht, ich kann auch nicht mehr. Ich packe es mit dir, aber ich soll es gar nicht von der Tennisplatte, das war mein Ich meine, es ist nicht so, dass man es nicht Ich meine, es ist nicht so, dass man es nicht mehr Ich meine, es ist nicht so, dass man es nicht mehr kann. Ich meine, es ist nicht so, dass man es nicht mehr kann. Ich meine, es ist nicht so, dass man es nicht mehr kann. Ich meine, es ist nicht so, dass man es nicht mehr kann. Ich meine, es ist nicht so, dass man es nicht mehr kann. Ich meine, es ist nicht so, dass man es nicht mehr kann. Ich meine, es ist nicht so, dass man es nicht mehr kann. Ich meine, es ist nicht so, dass man es nicht mehr kann. Ich meine, es ist nicht so, dass man es nicht mehr kann. Ich meine, es ist nicht so, dass man es nicht mehr kann. Ich meine, es ist nicht so, dass man es nicht mehr kann. Ich meine, es ist nicht so, dass man es nicht Part to play in goals, you know. Well, you you wanted the same same player of the year, didn't you, for the FAI yeah. awards and well, how close he was to winning that. Twenty nine sure. goals uh, in a season, I just think warrants player of the player of the year. Yeah, I would have thought, thought so league. myself, but anyways, it wasn't to be. But mm. anyways, Paul, that just about concludes the show. Yeah, yeah. well, uh, we will be at the Rovers and Bowls game as well tomorrow. So if you're up uh, around Tala tomorrow for us and uh, your DM us. And uh, we'll get your, your, your thoughts on the game. Myself and Connor will be at Bowls as well on Friday for the uh, Bowls yeah, game yeah. too. So, yeah, and myself and Kieran will be up in Dundalk for the visit of Shamrock Rovers. So it's uh, sure to be a huge week in regards to the League of Ireland. So um, make sure to check out all of our content on our channel this week. And if you haven't checked out our content from fan reactions from Friday night's games which is in a nice little playlist for you on the YouTube channel. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, please don't forget to like the video and please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and we'll speak to you all soon.